This is Gerardo Del Real with Resource Stock Digest. Joining me today is the CEO of Outcrop Silver and Gold, Mr. Joe Bear. Joe, how are you today? I'm very well, and it's a pleasure to be with you. It's great to have you back on again. We spoke maybe a week or a week and a half ago, and we talked about the upcoming catalyst. Amongst those pending assays, and then, of course, a, a resource estimate um, that is upcoming. Now, you had some news today that's got to really help advance the confidence that this is going to continue to grow. And, and by this, I mean the two new additional high-grade shoots that you just identified. You intercepted you intersected, I should say, an intercept of 2.2 meters of 2,790 gram silver equivalent at Santa Ana. And as I mentioned, you added two high grade shoots to the potential resource. I would love for you to provide some context on the news. And again, congrats, because you're doing exactly what you said you were going to do the last time we spoke. Yeah, I mean, it's encouraging to us. You know, those uh, shoots were basically were two for two on testing targets on newly permitted ground. So we're happy to see that. Um, that is going to push us towards a milestone of meeting our uh, what we want to do with a, with a resource uh, report this year. Um, it'll be an important company milestone because it'll be bringing our high grade discovery to the next stage of value, which is the which is a resource report, and that will be before the end of 2022. So, um, you know, hitting that kind of mineralization, I have to honestly say, sometimes it still surprises me the high <laughs> values, but it's but it certainly is fun to see the assays come in. We talk about, or you talked about in the release, about every shoot discovered expanding the potential resource area. You have 12 kilometers of untested vein zones. This is a 100% owned historic project um, that's already produced, right? This is a past producing mine. It produced 7.8 million ounces of silver. How excited does the team get from a technical perspective when you, when you come out the gate two for two and you have 12 kilometers of untested vein zones to test? Well, you know, I mean, the, the team's really enthusiastic. They like what they're doing. They're good at it. And um, I tell you what, one big, big uh, tell from that Frias mine, which you're referring to, which is which is we own, is on our property. Um, it really has a, a, it's a very small footprint. We really look at it as an analog or um, an equivalent example to any one of our 10 shoots. Um, not that every one will be 7.8 million, but it certainly is a framework of, of how to think about the potential of these uh, shoots we're drilling, including the two shoots we just discovered. Excellent. I, I, I want to stress how important it is that you are permitted for, and, and, and you know, you have drill rigs on site, you have a third rig that's being mobilized in March. It can be difficult if you don't know the country well and, and the way that the country works and, and approach the social license with a responsible approach. It can be difficult in Colombia for outside groups to come in and, and advance a project the way that you've been able to. We touched on it the last time we spoke, but I think you should be commended for being one of the few companies there that's doing the kind of work that you're doing without um, encountering, you know, much of any opposition. Uh, is, is that accurate? Yes, it's very accurate because uh, I think what you can say is that word travels fast from the community of Falan, where we're concentrated now. Uh, we've actually got 10 uh, easements um, all set to go around the freest mine itself. Uh, that's an amazing accomplishment in that amount of time. It just shows uh, the uh, confidence that the uh, larger uh, municipalities have in, in outcrop. And uh, uh, we're just teeing up uh, additional projects or additional, additional targets along that 12-kilometer uh, trend. Uh, you know, uh, uh, Gerardo, before I forget, I should say that the we have an internal guidance on that maiden compliant resource of between 45 and 55 million silver equivalent ounces, uh, between 550 and 750 grams equivalent silver per ton. So, you know, not, not an in, insignificant first maiden resource and, and, and not in that uh, great amount of time. When you talk about silver equivalent, because I think it's important to clarify how much of the silver, how much does silver contribute to those totals there? Uh, it's, 
you know, there there is a small, it's almost nominal lead zinc. What 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 when I say the five fifty to seven fifty, uh, the average for all our um, our shoots across across the, the the whole representative across the whole broad range of mineralization is actually fourteen hundred grams. Hmm. Uh, that larger number is undiluted, of course. Um, but that uh, that fourteen hundred grams is made up of seven point five two grams gold and eight hundred and sixty grams silver. Mm-hmm. So roughly uh, roughly seventy one silver to gold and nominal um, and a, a robust gold number and nominal lead zinc. Excellent, Joe. I'm looking forward to having you back on. Congrats on some great hits and a great start to receiving these assays. I'm assuming that you're anticipating assays to continue to come in here over the coming weeks. Yes, that's correct. We got we have some in the lab, and and we expect some uh, results from uh, adjacent to some of the drilling we just did. Excellent. Always a pleasure, sir. Thanks for your time. Okay. Hey, thank you. We'll catch you later.